Well, I don't even consider myself to be a Canadian because this is indigenous land and this land is occupied. So There's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah, I think it's called Puerto Rico. Today, common sense conservatives are announcing that we will axe the federal sales tax on all new homes sold for under a million dollars. Today, we are going to be making history. Uh, Kevin Vuong is putting on a press conference to announce some of the names of the 11 traders that have been cited to be in Ottawa. So this is going to be changing the course of the elections that are happening in one specific province. You'll find out later when we cover that. But first, before we dive into that, I want to look at a comedic performance that just took place at the MAGA rally down in Madison Square Gardens. Things were said, reactions were made. Now, I don't know about you guys, but honestly, I'm not really all that familiar with Tony Hinchcliffe. I've heard his name around a bit before uh, last night's performance, but I really don't know much about him. It stands to reason, of course, that with the choice of some jokes that he made, that the left will, of course, come out and attack, as we will see in a moment, courtesy of uh, AOC. It takes a lot to offend me. And after I heard about what Tony had said, I decided to take the time to, to watch his performance. And I wasn't offended by it, but I wasn't impressed by it either. It came across as lazy, uninspired. It really also gave me the impression that Tony is just this lazy dude looking for cheap points. Like he probably thinks that any kind of racist or xenophobic barb will land big points with a Republican audience, but you're about to see that is not the case. So let's take a look at a couple of his jokes. Believe it or not, people, I welcome migrants to the United States of America with open arms. And by open arms, I mean like this. <laughs> okay, so right there, you have to keep in mind that this is a crowd in the tens of thousands. Like, they packed Madison Square Gardens. And that laughter, that or lack of it, like, right there, it's telling you he's not off to a great start. Right? I mean, people are just, he's already not resonating with the audience. It's wild. And these Latinos, they love making babies too. Just know that. They do. They do. There's no pulling out. They don't do that. They come inside just like they did to our country. I don't find that offensive, but I don't find that funny. Like there's... It just doesn't land. And you can see the crowd too. It's once again, he's, it's just not landing with the crowd. Now I'm going to show you just one more clip. That's the one with the actual, uh, that's the one with the offensive remark. That's actually making a lot of waves right now. Um, but I want to give you guys a precursor and that's listen very carefully to what he says leading up to the joke, but because you can see he's floating. All right. I don't know what the actual term is for comedians when they're just trying to like keep their heads above water and plan their next move but you can see he's only about two or three minutes into his set by the time this joke comes around and he's already floundering so listen to this and draw your own conclusions it is absolutely wild times it really really is and uh you know there's a lot going on like i don't know if you guys know this but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now yeah i think it's called puerto rico Okay. All right. Okay. We're getting there. Again, normally I don't follow the national anthem, everybody. Uh, this isn't exactly a perfect comedy setup. There's some people here. All right. Very good. All right. So you're seeing like these jokes are not landing with the crowd. People are basically seeing for what he is and it's just a buffoon. This, of course, reflects very poorly on what the right is hoping to accomplish, but at the same time, when this does happen, you can understand that the left is going to pounce all over it and make it out. So now what I'm going to do is play uh, one news clip. And this clip just happens to feature an interview with AOC, of course. Um, pay special attention to the way she pronounces the word Latinos. Here we go. 
So, mm -hmm. so Congressman, uh, last night, right here in New York City, your hometown, mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump held a packed rally at Madison Square Garden, and he, a number of speakers used downright racist and offensive language, no more so than the so-called comedian who said that Puerto Rico was an island of garbage. Um, can you just give us your reaction to what you heard last night, just hours and hours of, of frankly, hate, uh, and what, frankly, how it could electrify this electorate? Well, there's a couple of things. As you mentioned, this was not, this was a hate rally. Mm -hmm. This was not just a presidential rally. This was also not just a campaign rally. I think it's very important for people to understand that these are many January 6 rallies. These are many stop the steal rallies. These are rallies to prime an electorate into rejecting the results of an election if it doesn't go the way that they want. Because Donald Trump and that entire cadre of people up on that stage, Stephen Miller, et cetera, do not respect the law of the United States of America. And they either want to win this election or they are using rhetoric of taking it by force. Mm -hmm. That is what this that is what they mean. And that's what they're doing when they are inciting <clears throat> violence and hatred against Latinos, against black Americans, against Americans who don't have children against. I mean, we're, you have J.D. Vance literally talking about watering down people's right to vote depending on if they can viably carry a child or not. We have to understand how unhinged this campaign has gotten. And the only reason that the rhetoric has gotten this far is precisely because they are trying to prime the kind of froth that led up to the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that we connect those dots. And right now the campaign is scrambling and they're trying to blame this rhetoric on a so-called comedian. This is not a comedian. This is the Trump campaign. These are, they invited this rhetoric on their stage for a reason. It was a chorus of speakers on that campaign for a reason. It was vetted and they knew exactly who was going to say what before they went on. And so the only backtracking that they're doing right now is just because tens of thousands of Puerto Ricans happen to live in Philadelphia, Florida, Michigan, Wisconsin, and they, and also the several swing seats in the house, in the, in, in the House of Representatives that run through the state of New York. And they're just realizing that they might have made a big error by saying out loud what they're okay. thinking. Okay, so now we're just about to cover that press conference from Kevin Vo But first, very quickly, I just want to go over the recent announcement by the conservatives that they will be cutting the sales tax on the sale of homes under a million dollars. Let's take a quick look at what they are saying for themselves. After nine years of the NDP liberals, rents have doubled. Mortgage payments have doubled. The minimum down payment needed for the average new home has doubled. Double trouble. Under the NDP Liberals, housing costs in Canada have outpaced people's incomes by more than any other G7 country. Let's take a look at what that means. Nine years ago, it would have taken you 25 years to pay off a mortgage. Today, it takes 25 years just to save up for a down payment. The first thing that came to mind uh, after seeing that is this video. It's one of my favorite videos on Twitter. I'll play for you right now. Uh, I had to replace the song to protect myself against any copyright strikes, but it always makes me laugh. Have a look. All right, and now it's time for some of the outtakes from Kevin Wong's presser. This is quite something. I was expecting maybe to have a few more names released than they actually did, but this is actually a very great start. And you just wait till you see one of the names. It's an absolute shocker. In fact, that shocking name is not even in Ottawa, but you're going to see why it is one of the most important names on that list. I'm here today to highlight some of the names and entities covered in my updated book and to pose a question. Should other Canadian journalists be examining the openly available evidence surrounding these networks? Firstly, my book recounts reporting on a 2020 tape recording provided to me where Senator Yuen Pao Wu is heard in a 47-minute private briefing with the Canada Committee 100 Society. This group included Conservative Senator Victor Oh as an advisory member. The Canada Committee 100 Society 
is led in Vancouver by Ding Guo, a journalist who is also an advisor to British Columbia Premier David Eby. Other journalists participating in this tape-recorded meeting with Senator Wu later supported Liberal candidate Parm Baines in 2021. I write, according to three national security sources, Liberal Cabinet Minister Mary Ng was identified in CSIS investigations as one of 11 Toronto area candidates clandestinely supported by Chinese consulate and United Front influence networks in the 2019 election. And there you have it. This is crazy. David Eby has been named. At the time that this video is being shot, the BC election is still being decided. I mean, they're still doing that recount and it's still up in the air. For all we know, by the time you watch this next video, David Eby might not even be a figure in BC politics at all. He might resign. He might be ousted from the party. Who knows what? For all we know, this might actually swing this razor thin margin in John Rustad's favor. We'll see. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. The Liberals are unleashing an internet censorship law known as Bill C-23. Even if they weren't, three oceans can be deplatformed at any time for any reason. That's why I want to invite you to join the Three Oceans newsletter. If standing up against mass immigration, excessive taxation, the housing crisis, and the woke agenda is important to you, joining the Three Oceans newsletter is the best move you can make. It's free and it will never be deplatformed. Unlike this channel and other social media accounts, the Three Oceans newsletter is no holds barred and uncensored. Also, you can count on your data being protected and not being monitored like it is on social media. So visit threeoceans.ca. Once again, that's threeoceans.ca to subscribe and beat the woke authorities trying to control the narrative like they control your government.